Okay. I don't know about you guys, but after hearing Amanda Gorman's inaugural poem, I was really pumped to hear more about her. And then a lot of our commenters started telling us that she was going to be performing at the Super Bowl, like the biggest event of the year. And we were both really pumped about it. I know a lot of people really pumped about it. And then it happened. And what was that? <laughs> what was that? That was a bunch of, it was some commercialized plastic is what it was. <laughs> he, Eli texted me this. We were like apart last night, but he just goes, that felt like plastic. And I was like, that's exactly what it felt like. So look, we understand that complaining about this type of stuff doesn't get us anywhere. Yes. So what we're going to do today is talk about the things that we think went wrong yep. with this whole experience, how the NFL just butchered it. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to talk about what we and you guys and anyone who has influence over public situations like this in the future can do better. Yes. And I mean, what the NFL could have done better. Yeah. Like what they can do better in the future. Yeah. So, so we, got a, we got a few of our points written down. But before we get into any of that, we want to talk about why this is important. Yes. Like why, what was the opportunity that the NFL had here and why did they not capitalize on it? Yes. You know? Okay. So to start, the inauguration in 2021 had around 33 million people watching. That's a lot of people. And then Amanda Gorman comes up, steals the show, totally stole the show. Her poem was amazing. I think she uplifted so many people, gave people new perspectives and everyone was just so pumped about her and about the idea of unity and progression as a country. That was awesome. Then you have the Super Bowl, which she is now set to perform at, that gets over 100 million viewers the night of every year. Three times the amount of people. Three times the amount of people. Like, international audience. Think about how much traction and trend, like how much she was trending and how many people connected with her after the inauguration, then times that by three potentially with the Super Bowl. Yeah. That, that is the... Including all the people who are already fans of her who would now be willing to share her even more. Yes, yes, exactly. I think there were a ton of people who were just tuning into the Super Bowl, myself and my mom included, that were only watching to see what Amanda Gorman had to say. Yeah, so there's the amount of people you get to reach. Then there's also this idea that the entire country is coming together in one event. Right, right. You have tons of people from different backgrounds, different political parties. They all love football because it's like a very, it's oftentimes a non-political thing. Yeah. But if you have that amount of people coming together, that's the best chance. Those are the best times for someone to come in and give you more unity because yes. of how separated we are. And like, you know, who can do that is a poet, you know, like politician, people are always going to say, no, no, we don't want that. Mm. But if you have a poet come in, keep this message of unity, which I think a poet can do and also keep things political and push boundaries. I think you can do that. All of those things as being a poet, which is so special. It was just an opportunity for mass unity. Yes, yes, yes. And they tossed it. They absolutely <laughs> tossed it. So I feel like now we can get into how they tossed it. Yes. And what we can do better. Absolutely. The, the first thing that was striking was the fact that she wasn't even there. Yeah. And she was not introduced. Like, like... <laughs> Why? Why? So so what is what is problematic about that? First of all, everyone else is introduced. That's anyone. You know, like the refs are often introduced, the teams and the team captains are introduced. Everyone who's going to be performing, you know, outside of her apparently, were all introduced. And those are all people that we have general respect for and a lot of people are aware of as a nation like musical artists are people that we know and we respect and we have a lot of value for in our nation that's why they make so much money mm. uh football players we have a lot of respect for football players because again we're giving them so much money because they entertain us all the time but poets often don't get as much respect 
I find in our nation. Like we don't, we don't have poets that are making so much money because they're getting all this attention. And so it feels even more disrespectful if you're going to bring a poet on for the first time ever in the Super Bowl, which so many people were excited about. And that can open so many people to the possibility of like what poetry can be mm. and to not even introduce her. I think there were probably millions and millions and millions of people who were like, who's this lady? Why is she speaking? Yeah. Instead of being like, oh, this is the U.S. Youth Poet Laureate, Amanda Gorman. Like, I didn't even know that there was a Youth Poet Laureate. Let me look that up now and find it's out exactly. more about poetry. No one no one knows what poetry is or the power of poetry. Yes. And that is where, for me, a, a poet, like a rapper, all these people are philosophers. They are, they are giving... The best ones are, especially. Exactly. Yeah. Like, they're giving their ideas it's not the words it's what's in the words yes and instead of expressing that and coming together around these I ideas these mm -hmm. ideas of union that she was spreading at the inauguration yeah without knowledge of the power that poetry holds mm -hmm. no one's ever going to take that seriously or understand it exactly and they're going to have this idea of poetry of like Oh, it's these rhymy words that these people, it's like a, like a lullaby song that that's what poetry is. But people like Amanda Gorman can completely expand your definition of poetry, mm. which she just wasn't able to do in this performance. Like no one is going to come out of that being like, I'm more into poetry, poetry now. No yeah. one. Yeah. And then also huge thing about the inauguration was that her, the way she performed it mm. was so powerful in this one. She wasn't even there to perform it. Yeah. Like, imagine the difference in having this whole stadium look at a screen with this, like, pre-edited video, yeah. which they have tons of commercials playing on that screen so throughout the whole game. You're probably not even paying attention to it. Or having this black fe young black female, mm -hmm. poet laureate, stand in the middle of a stadium. Yes. And speak. Yes. Like, how different... Oh. Are those two effects? Yes, yes. Like why she wasn't in the middle of the field with a microphone and five minutes to do what she wanted. Like it just it just doesn't make sense. Come on. It's 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 just disrespectful. It is disrespectful. And that that's where in the future yes. it's like the things we need to do is one, make people aware of what's what's being done. Yes. Two, make people aware of the different types of things you can do like mm. the power inside of those things because mm -hmm. no one knows what poets can do yes yes and then lastly just give the same amount of respect to all all people exactly <laughs> like, like the weekend was able to construct a lot of his performance like apparently he paid out eight million of his own money to make this performance like something grander and he could just like, he just chose these songs that he could perform. And a lot of them, like, if you listen to the lyrics, there either wasn't a lot going on there or it's actually like not a really good message. Flexing your ability to make money and sleep with people. Ex that's 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 what <laughs> a lot of those songs were. And so he had this kind of flexibility. Nothing against The weekend. He's got cool music. He's got cool but... <laughs> music, for sure. Like, I listen to him all the time, but I'm just saying... This is a national stage we're talking about. Mm. Like, and so if you're going to make something that could have been so powerful by her, Amanda Gorman, lukewarm, and just like water it all down to the point where it's not even a poem anymore, but then allow The weekend to do stuff like that so that, oh, we're just trying not to be controversial or anything. What is that? Yeah. What are like that is so hypocritical, I which, feel like. Which moves us on to our second point. Yes. Which is the content of this poem. Like Yeah. Y I don't know if you can call it a poem I or don't, not. I don't not, know. not to offend Amanda. Like if Amanda, yes. if you are watching this, we want to know what your experience was because 100 we've studied your other stuff we know you're amazing and we know what you're capable of you so it was are just a... brilliant you're like you are a brilliant mind that has the potential to change this nation forever and if anyone doesn't understand the brilliance of her work 
just go check out Mitch did an analysis on her inauguration poem mm -hmm. and you'll see how much is going on there so much that just slips under the radar for a lot of people even though there's still a lot that you get on the surface level yes but then under yes. that there's just gold exactly so the, the 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 content in this she so she had a minute and a half I think yeah. it was um it's like no time and in that time she she was thanking three people, right? Mm -hmm. Like the three captains, they called it. Yeah. Like three people who, probably great people who are giving their time right. to help America, like really good stuff. Mm -hmm. But then her whole conclusion with all of this was like, say thank you to the people who are helping. And to me, that's like, in America, if yeah. there is one thing that we're taught all across America, mm -hmm. it's to be polite. Like, please and thank you True. are taught everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. And Americans are so good at saying please and thank you and and pretending to be thankful when we're not, when we don't actually show our thank, our gratitude, wow. you know? And it felt to me like this poem was like, let's try to do the thing. Like, it felt like a, a corporation was telling her, like, we need to keep it as this as surface possible. level this isn't against amanda at all this is more like a completely wasted opportunity because i don't see any reality where this was what she wanted and that that brings us to the idea that in her pre post inauguration pre super bowl interviews yeah she would always talk about the fact that what she thinks poetry is here to do and what she is here to do yeah is create deep healing Mm -hmm. and, and deep connection again mm -hmm. in this country. I think a lot of times in cultures, we think of the ways in which we can cleanse ourselves with water. I think of the ways that we can cleanse ourselves with words, meaning that oh. this poem was an opportunity to kind of re-sanctify, re-purify, and reclaim not just the Capitol building, but American democracy and what it stands for. And so right. it's the moments I strive for in my lifetime, which is to bring poetry into the spaces that we least expect it so that we can fully kind of grapple with the ways in which it can heal and kind of resurrect us. And then you see something like that and you're like, deep healing doesn't happen on a surface level. Exactly. And that whole, whatever that minute and a half was, that was all surface level. And, and we know that Amanda goes far deeper, way deeper than the surface <laughs> level. We know she does that with every time that she's performed except for this one. And, and again, this is not to say that those three people, those captains, whatever we're yeah. calling them, are not good people doing amazing things. Yes. Who, should, who, who shouldn't have like a stage like that. Right. Not at all. But if you look at her inauguration poem and things like that, the whole idea is let's stop looking at other people and saying thank you for what you're doing and let's start giving ourselves yeah and if everyone starts giving your yourself yes then we create an actual community yes like what is community besides everyone deciding to give to something bigger than themselves yes and like that's what her other poems were doing but then this poem felt like you don't need to do the work because these people are doing the work yeah and sure they get honored on this big stage once in their lifetime that's going to be it and and you can just make sure to say thank you. Right. Like, enjoy your peaceful time with your family in this time of great, like, honestly, chaos. Like, things are going crazy right now. And it's as if the Super Bowl tried to make it seem like, oh, we're just, we're, we're almost there. We're almost just fine again and we can just go back to normal and things. And, and there were so many, so many ads and commercials either through the Super Bowl, like during the Super Bowl or on commercial breaks, where it seemed like very similar to what Amanda Gorman was saying. It was like these narrated things with this inspiring music under it. And it was like they were just saying these very vague, hopeful things like, let's get back. Let, let's get back. Let, we're almost there. This has been so tough for us, but we're all strong. But it was, there was nothing said. There was nothing said mm. in any of those things that can get people to heal because healing doesn't come through this like fluffy, you don't talk about anything type thing. The healing comes when you, when you dig in Amanda's inauguration poem, she digs in, she goes through all of that. She talks about you clean the wound, you clean the wound. And then after 
people didn't feel sad. They didn't feel terrible after Amanda Gorman's inaugural poem. Quite the opposite. They felt very uplifted and they felt unified because they're, they're like, okay, we're acknowledging all these things that are going mm. on. Yeah, which, which makes me think about the idea of that this whole ex- Super Bowl experience yeah. feels like this day of the year where everyone wants to like smile be with their family yeah and like that's all mm-hmm. and for that reason we shouldn't touch any bigger topics exactly like when i looked up amanda gorman's performance on youtube of the super bowl yeah the like first comment i saw was someone who was like this was great i was afraid she was gonna make this very political but this was very hopeful mm-hmm. and it was like look at the problems right there First, that we're saying politics is something bad. Yes. It's like politics, we've we've construed into this stupid idea of just headache rather than politics just being the process of making policies that a community follows. Mm -hmm. Like politics is something everyone should be involved in and everyone should enjoy being involved in Mm -hmm. because it's literally deciding how we get to interact with each other. As a community. Yeah. And it's like why we've taken this idea of politics and turned it into a headache and all of that is because we don't we're always focused on this surface. Exactly. We're not talking about the actual reason why politics matter. Yeah. Like if we have this feeling that there's this event where everyone's coming together and that we can't talk about the serious things there mm-hmm. and then uplift from the serious things. Yeah. Like what what are we doing? Yes. So so the changes we need to make are Give the poets space to make their content. Yes. Because, again, we need to trust these thinkers that they are actually... We we, we don't even need to trust her because we already know her. We already yeah. know the level of stuff she can produce. Yeah. But for anyone in the future, you know, uh-huh. we need to... And we need to give them that space. Mm. And and not not make stuff about money. Let the like, artists <laughs> be artists. You know? Yeah. And, and that's when we move on to... This last point of the, mm-hmm. the the one minute and 30 seconds that we got. Yes, yes. And, and I think largely because it was only one minute and 30 seconds, she had to stay super surf. Like, what can you say in a minute and 30 seconds right. that builds to anything? Right. And that's where her, her whole inauguration poem, like the first minute and 30 seconds was all about like defining who is the voice of this poem. Mm-hmm like addressing the problems and and in one minute and 30 seconds she brought you into this just deeply into the troubles that we're going through yes and it's like that's a tough dive to take but only once you're in the wound are you going to do the healing you Mm -hmm. know and it's like you're right you're right we got this creepy creepy (laughs) overwhelming feeling that this felt like some Hunger Games type stuff. We just felt like this was like someone coming up from District 1, like, like all proper, like, like I've been told everything to say. I've been told what to wear. I've, uh, like, I've, I I didn't get to choose the camera angles. I didn't get to choose how long this was. And I'm just going to pretend like I like this. I I know that, I know that Amanda's like into fashion and stuff and now has like a fashion contract or something. I think a lot of her fashion sense is awesome too. Like that coat she wore for the inauguration was fire. But, but you cannot tell me that this coat and this setup doesn't look like District 1 from the Hunger Games. Yeah. Like you yeah. It's like scary futuristic. Uh Uh-huh. And then, and then, yeah, the camera angles, like... You can't tell me that a poet would rather have these shots of like side angles where she's looking off into blackness. Yeah. Rather than looking straight at the camera, especially when you see the way that she works a crowd in the Mm -hmm. inauguration Mm -hmm. poem where she's doing a very good job being like eye contact. Yeah. Bang. Boom. Like. Right. Right. And none of that got to show again because she's not live. And then Mm -hmm. also in this in this commercial, this poem commercial whatever you want to call it mm-hmm. all of the people who got highlighted are not shown actually doing any of their work yeah. they're shown going into empty rooms and all of that type of stuff and i i get that you can say like oh it's covid times so we can't show we can't like get a f- professional film crew in mm-hmm. or whatever 
but I'm sure if she was the one making decisions about the video, yeah. she would want to show it how it is mm. and also have people like you can send a cameraman in very safely mm -hmm. to go shoot in a hospital or to go shoot a teacher, football coach. Especially if you're dealing with the NFL, who they just have so much money. Yeah. They can do these things. Yeah, and, and that, that goes back to the whole idea of her not being there. Yes. And you being like, oh, maybe she wasn't there because COVID or other things like that. But we know that she was flown out to the inauguration. Yep. We know that all these other artists were flown out to the Super Bowl. Yes. And we also know that every you, you mentioned this, that everything she's done, and she said this herself growing up, is with the goal of becoming president. Like, that's mm -hmm. what she's had in mind the whole time. So do you think she's going to give up the opportunity to talk to the biggest stage you ever could in one night? It's nonsensical. It, that, that does not make any sense. The takeaways from this, like, last piece about, like, editing and shortening what's being said. Yeah. We are never going to get to the truth. We are never going to move on as a society if we're not giving the space to do that healing. We're always looking for like, you know, on social media and things with these like our shortened attention spans. We're always looking for like those quick f clips, those quick headlines, those quick things. And it seems like that was really played out here. Mm -hmm. You know, you want that quick uplifting thing without any of the other stuff that you don't want. Yeah. You know, like, but you have to have all that other stuff to actually be doing the healing. We we want to know what you guys thought, like, if, if we were the only ones who were as upset by this. Yeah, yeah. But that's, again, because we respect the hell out of Amanda and thought mm. that this was just a, a horrible display. Yeah. And not even a mention of what poetry is mm. and the space poetry should hold yeah, on, a, yeah. on a national scale. And again, like we really do try to keep this channel as positive as positive as we can. But like we were saying, like with the um, how Amanda Gorman approaches poetry, she has to go into the trenches. Mm. And like sometimes you have to dive in there. And that's kind of what we felt like we had to do with this video is like give you things to work on and give give our nation things to work on that we have found with the issues with this uh, piece, but also dive into those issues because there's big issues there and i think if we don't have people starting conversations about this we're just not going to talk about it mm. so we need to talk about it yeah so let us know what you thought yeah if we're just crazy conspiracy theorists <laughs> or if you agree <laughs> or if, if you got like really positive things out of this experience we definitely want to hear about that seriously too, yeah like, yeah that's what we need <laughs> i honestly know only like a few people's reaction and they all line up with mine but of course i'm in my little bubble yeah. I'd love to know if people have different perspectives. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I want to hear more more original Amanda. I'd love like, that. <laughs> like, I would yeah. love nothing more than more original Amanda. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. All right. Thanks let's, for tuning in, everyone. Yeah. 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 Let's, let's, let's do better. Yeah. Let's do better. <laughs> let's just do it. Yeah. All right. Much love. Much love.